Well, today we know some some of you out there might be interested in getting into drones, uh, drone right. video, but uh, maybe the cost of it has prevented you from grabbing one. And um, Fred just picked up one recently, and we've seen right. on the internet there's some been specials. Fred just picked up a Typhoon Q 500 4K. Right. It was like 300, a little over 300 dollars. It was right? about 340, 340 which this is usually about a 600 yeah, six dollar plus, six or 700. Now, it, depending on did, what comes with it. Yeah, you did get a little bit more with it, but still, it was a heck of a bar. Plus, right. uh, like a week later, I saw the next model up, which was a six bladed that has the raisable um, right. landing gear and a. Um, camera that can go 360 as well as obstacle buoyance for 589 something like that right. which is a heck of a price so well let's bring it out yeah, here we'll go with, this is the typhoon by unique that's y-u-n-e-e-c and this thing's a beast we're almost too close it is kind of unique <laughs> this thing is big yeah it, it, and I made the decision. It's not a portal. It's not one you're going to go no. put your backpack and carry around with. The case you, that I have this in is is pretty good size, and but uh, most are, of the cases that I saw, you had to take the blades off. These are eleven. I inch, 11 inch actually props. have one that I can leave the blades on. Yeah, you picked up a husky case from Home Depot, right? Mm-hmm. And put it in there. But this thing's nice. Here's where the battery goes. I'll show you real quick. Batteries are pretty easy to deal with as long as you have the label side up. You get you just, one one battery with it the... It depends. There's a couple of kits out there. One thing you have to make sure is out of the way. But on this refurb special, you got one battery. Right, one battery. I have to make sure that cable's out of the way. And that's for doing... Uh, and now watch me make pictures. this more difficult than it should be. There, there it goes. There goes right And in. I just push it in until it won't go any further, and it plugs itself in. Make sure the cable's back in there. And just close the door, and it's ready to go. Yep. Uh, it will fly... Now, on paper, they say up to 28 minutes. Turn this around We've had a it bit. for a pretty good amount of time up in the air. Yeah, We've that's put it through a lot of paces. ideal. But, uh, yeah. You take the, the cover off here, camera, and there's your 4K camera on a gimbal. Nice. Yes, yeah, 4K, it's on a gimbal, and this is removable, which we're going to show here right. shortly. The so. idea is that this thing works beautifully. We couldn't believe the quality. Yep. And if you roll it over, you can get to the card back here in this little slot, and it uses a mini SD mini card. SD. And first thing I did is that they, they put a little 16 uh, gig. Yeah, 16 gig on there. Which isn't much for 4K. No, I basically got a 64 yep. as quickly as I could. I And those are getting very inexpensive, folks. You can go all the way up to a 128. This will handle, and I've done, look, checked the specs. It's supposed to handle up to a 128. It will not handle any bigger than that. Yep. But up to 128 uh, which is good. gig, which is not bad at all. And then also so, uh, the transmitter is kind of uh, special, too. It's also... <laughs> I guess kind of matches the drone as it's large. And the screen is built right into it. Now I have the bumpers on there. This comes with these bumpers, and I recommend you keep them because in transport it'll protect your joysticks. Yep. And this has got an Android system built into it. Basically, it's an Android. And it is a touch screen. 720 or is it 1080 uh, video stream? The video I stream think it's is at 1080. 1080. 1080. Now, which is because of that, because of that, it causes a little bit of lag. I've noticed newer models, including the ones by Unique, use 720, which means that they can transmit it much more quickly. Right. And so, what you're seeing is not the finished product. Unfortunately, with a 1080, it's got a little bit of lag. The quality is higher when you're looking at it in real time, but the camera, there's just a slight, it could be half a second, it could be, you know, eighths of a second, but it's just enough where they say, we don't recommend it flying strictly by looking through the screen with first person point of view, right? Right, exactly. Uh, so you're using a little bit of both. You're watching it and you can look through the screen to see where you are and what yeah, you're you doing. You always want to keep them, even right. by law, you have to keep them within line of sight and uh, if you're using something like this, it's a good to have another observer with you. So why don't we go ahead and show them, go out in the field and actually show how it flies. Sure. Why don't we do that? Hi, well, looks like we're going to get ready and take the beast out. So what I'm going to do first, of course, I'm going to start this little guy, my controller. There it goes. 
the actual little quadcopter out. And the advice is that you go 26 feet. We're going to be flying this in easy mode or smart mode. And you have to go out 26 feet so it'll stay properly away from the operator. So we're going to go roughly that distance out. I'm going to turn it on and set it down. Fairly flat area. And I'm going to go ahead and face it north just to help with making sure that the compass kicks in quickly. So now what it's doing is that the Wi-Fi is connecting, so I had a chance for it to boot up, and it's going to take it a minute. So the now this is not just the Wi-Fi to the copter, but the video Wi-Fi as well. So it'll take it a minute to establish that connection, and I'll get ready to launch. So it's still working. Sometimes it may take a minute. That's one thing we found uh, with the Unique, that sometimes it can take a little bit of time for the connection to fully uh, do its thing. It's telling me that it sees the copter, but it's trying to connect to the video now. And there we go. I'll see a little screen that says, Welcome Pilot, and I can launch. All right, the launch button is actually up here. It says Start and Stop, and I actually hold the button down for several seconds, and then I get ready to launch. I'm going to put it into the three modes. Smart is at the top, angle in the middle, home is at the bottom. I'm going to go in smart mode because I'm going to try some different things with it. So it's ready to go. It's, I'm looking at tall grass right now through the camera and I'm going to go ahead and launch. So hold it down and it started up. So a little grass I think that it cut in there. All right, so now I simply will use this side to fly, you know, to go up or down. And of course, this is going to be my side to side. And of course, I will be able to turn with this. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it. I'm going to check my controls because I want to be at about halfway. I don't want to be in fast mode. This has some modes on it from turtle to rabbit. You'll see a close up of this later. And what it allows me to do if I'm a beginner, I go into slow mode so it does not react so quickly. And, that way, if I make a mistake, I can correct it. But I'm going to put it about halfway in between and get ready to launch. And I'm off the ground. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and launch in smart mode. And I'm going to show you the follow me and the um, look at me, basically, is what they call it. So what I do is that if I'm in smart, it's automatically going to be defaulting to follow me mode. There's a little eye on the screen, and when it's orange, that tells me it's in follow me mode. So I'm going to launch it. What it actually does is follow in proportion to the controller. So let's go ahead and launch. So I'm going to level it off fairly low. Notice how it's following me. When I move, it moves with me. So if I wanted to video myself, I would turn it around in the video mode. And I could actually get some footage of that. So let's try that. Let's see if we can turn it, turn the camera on, and if it'll follow me. So let's turn it. Of course, I went the long way around, but that's all right. Let's see if I see myself. I'm going to tilt the camera up a little bit. There I am. I'm going to walk up a little bit to it. Not too close, but I want to be a little bit more in the picture. Okay, and look what it did. In smart mode, it stays away from me. I cannot get too close to it. It will maintain its distance, which is good. It's another point of the follow me. So I could walk towards it, and it will back up. It's kind of cool when you think about it. Then I walk back the other way and it'll follow me. Come on, what can be cooler than that? So now I'm, I'm in follow me, not follow me, but watch me mode. So I'm going to turn the tape on. And what it should do is no matter where I move, yes, the device may move much like follow me, but the camera is going to stay right on me. As soon as I stop, it's going to zoom back in or, or not actually zoom, but put itself right on me. The drone still stays at that distance and will tend to follow to a certain extent, but also the camera is now honing in right on me. 
There it goes. Now it actually grabbed Jim. It's confused who to follow. Ah, now it's coming back to me. So it, it, it was looking to see who it needed to follow. It'd be the controller, shouldn't it? Well, the controller is actually what it's looking at, Jim. But the camera is actually has a little uh, crosshair in there, and it's actually the camera is putting me right in the crosshair, which doesn't necessarily happen in the following mode. This is the watch me mode, so it's supposed to watch me as well as follow. I've been in smart mode, but that's going to be limited. And one of the things they do suggest as soon as possible when you have something this by this drone and get familiar with it, smart is going to be good for some things, but angle mode is the true pilot mode. So I'm going to switch to angle mode, which is right in the center. And now what will happen, it should not follow anymore. It's going to stay right where it is even when I walk up to it. So now I'm in complete control and there's nothing automatic going on. I can tell it where to go. So I'm piloting it completely at this point. There's nothing automatic going on. And I also in smart mode, it tends to stay within about 300 feet of you and not get away from you. And that's again, because they're assuming you might be a beginner and smart mode was how you can learn with it. But once you can learn angle mode, you can get a lot more from it. You can still shoot good footage. You notice the wind's whipping it around a little bit, but you'll be able to see that our video is rock solid which is nice. This is a very good uh, 4K camera platform. Extremely stable. And as you notice, it's not real noise. Excuse me, not real noisy. It's not a high pitched, it's a low sound. And that brings us something that I'd like to do. I want to take a decibel meter, if we can bring it down and measure it and we'll compare it to the little Mavic. Because I have a theory that the Mavic and some of the smaller drones, it's frequency as much as uh, the actual audio levels. Can we try that? Sure. Okay, we're going to measure the audio, the decibels here with a little, this is not real scientific, but go ahead, Fred. Don't kill me. If you can hover at about three or four feet. I'm averaging about 65 decibels at that distance, about three feet away. Okay, well, we measured the decibel reading of the Typhoon, and now I'm going to do the little Mavic Air just to do it a comparison. So I'm going to raise this up and to about three feet or so, like Fred did. Hold it there and get a reading. And it's actually going again between, oh, about 60. 65 I mean it's jumping around a bit but just like with the uh, Fred's uh, maybe a little further so the noise level is actually about the same as it is for the typhoon so I think my theory is correct that it's actually the frequency as much as the uh, the decibel readings and again this is not that scientific but it gives us a good comparison all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm in angle mode which is pilot mode I'm gonna try the home mode I'm gonna take the craft a little ways away. And home mode basically brings it back. And lands it. To you and lands it, right? Right. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna to switch to home mode And now. it's uh, based upon the location of the controller or transmitter, not where it took off, correct? Right. It'll land and shut itself off. Cool. And that's home mode. So for the inexperienced flyer, it's probably a great thing to have because landing takes a little bit of practice. But also for somebody like us, if I see I'm starting to get low and I'm trying to do two or three things at once, I know I'm in a nice open spot, it's gonna land roughly 20, 26 feet away from me. It won't come any closer, but it'll land itself down and shut itself off. So uh, the one thing that will happen when the battery gets really, really low, 
it's going to tell me anyway. It's going to vibrate, and uh, I'm going to see a flashing red. And I'm also going to see a little box that comes across the screen and say, battery low. Also, the drone will lower itself to a predetermined height, and then will wait for you to land it. If you had something like, like that happen, and you just didn't feel comfortable landing it, or for whatever reason, flip it to home, and it'll just finish dropping down. And should also mention, Fred, that uh, it doesn't have collision detection. So no, if it it's got not. something that it comes back automatically, it's possible it could run. So you should right. do this in an open area. You want an open area. You don't want anything between you and the craft. Also, watch out when you're walking on hilly areas because now that craft is going to go straight and you're walking up a hill. It can crash into the ground. So you don't want that to happen. Also, if you get too far away from it in smart mode for whatever reason, uh, you can lose control of it if it loses the signal for any reason. It'll go back automatically into uh, angle mode and you better land it and bring it back uh, or get it back into control because two things could happen. It could crash or it could do what they call fly away, meaning it doesn't have anybody control it and just goes rogue on you and takes off. You it don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Uh, so always make sure you understand what's happening in your distance and be aware of the land around you. Also, Yes, you get to see this in first person point of view. You can see through the camera, but there is a little bit of lagginess. It's because it transmits at a very high rate and it takes the picture a few seconds to correct. So flying it strictly... A few seconds or a fraction of a second? Well, it can take anywhere from a fraction to a couple seconds. If I move very quickly, you'll notice it takes a second for it, not only for the camera to move, but for it to catch up. Uh, the closer you are, the better it is, of course. But we found that there is a little bit of lag and it can be anywhere from a fractions of seconds to even longer. So if you're far, fairly far away flying it in pilot mode, don't depend upon the screen only. You need to be watching it or at least have two people uh, keeping an eye on where you are and in proportion to where your hazards are, right? So just keep it in mind, it's safe drone flying. Well, hey, we talked was, about earlier. Kind of cool. Yeah, we talked about earlier that the camera is removable, yes? Yeah, and that's which kind of unique about unique that it has This a is the gimbal camera. it goes on. Here is the well, camera. Gimbal, the gimbal handle. Well, it's a gimbal handle. That's, yeah, the gimbal right. comes off. Gimbal's the, actually here. So this is a handle and it slides on the same way it slides off the drone itself. Mm -hmm. Jim's bending forward into my light here. There. I wanted to see. So that's on, and then what I need to do is that I have power down here. It uses eight double A's. I recommend rechargeables. Yep. That's coming on. And so this is what's a, kind of interesting. It uses, I assume, Bluetooth? Because there's not a cable. Well, it just beeped telling me that it saw the... So gotcha. what he's doing is he's using his phone, which will transmit the video signal from the camera to a, an app provided by Unique, which is a free download. And now you can use this as a handheld uh, gimbal-controlled 4K camera, a video camera, which is really cool. Although I, you can do also do stills with it, too, mm -hmm. right? Nope. You don't use Bluetooth. You actually use... There it is right there. Oh, it's Wi-Fi. Ah, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Why not? Yeah, but you have to use the password. Yep. So, and then yeah. what it'll let me do is so see what's going on it'll here. It'll transmit that to the and phone. And I can control so it. So now you've got kind of a handheld, kind of a sports cam that... Uh, and you can see what the video is uh, on the uh, camera. But yeah, move that and you can see how the camera stays. You tilt it down and everything. Well, right now. Yeah, look at that. See? Yeah, it's not it's, fully activated because I don't, I don't have everything. Right. But yeah, it actually, just like it would on the, um, the drone, it will keep the video fairly, fairly steady and as you move around. Now, they saying with any gimbal, that if you're doing a lot of walking and are doing this movement up and down, you're still going to get that. Yeah. So you're so, supposed to keep steady yeah, with that your hand. Yeah, secret try with to using keep it, yeah. any gimbal or any of those steady devices is try to keep them as level as possible. What a friend of mine used to tell me, he said, act as if you're punching somebody. Yep. And you, well, you bend, Straight your, on. bend your knees and kind of shuffle along. It's But, but if you do a normal walk. Yeah, you're, if you're going doop-doop-doop, yeah. but if you're kind of doing a something between a kung fu and tai chi walk, yeah. I guess. 
So if you can pick one of these up, if you get three or four hundred dollars, uh, they're a great bargain. And uh, it has and this even is not more. their newest model. No. And, so this realize has, you're probably going to get even better savings on them. It's still a current model. It's still a current. It's still model. currently online, and I think they just did a firmware upgrade here not too long ago. So um, yeah, and DJI is doing the same thing. Um, so maybe you get your chance to get into a drone sure. and do some drone for not photos too much money and video. And as you saw earlier, this has the easy mode. Yep which is called smart mode, which for learning to fly, is probably the best mode to use on this thing. It and is designed as big as it seems. DJI has that also. Right. When you the first nice thing turn about on DJI that, products, it also right. does the same thing. So you have a smart mode, although this one you can change on the run. That's one thing I did like about it. You can change it on the fly. Yep. You can do the same thing with DJI, but you and, do it uh, in the app. Right. And this one, I actually do it right on the controller. Yep. Um, and... There's things I like about this that I think DJI should have, and there's things I, that I like about the DJI that the Unique doesn't have. It really comes down to personal yeah. preference, if you're comfortable with the, with the platform. I think the biggest advantage now to the newer G DJIs, at least the Mavic Pro, the Mavic Air, are size as far as travel. The fact right. that they're compact. Very, very small. Throw them in. They're still 4K. Right. Um, but you can't beat this for the price. So, no. what's your assessment? What's your bottom line, Fred? Bottom you, line is I it? like it. I'm I'm tickled with it. It's it's as a platform, I can put it on hover and just leave it go. How, it's yes, beautiful. Well, it is steady. How about it's on a one steady. to five scale? What would you rate it? I would not give it a five quite. I'd probably give it a four and a half because there's <laughs> a couple things that I would do a little differently. I'm very happy with it. There's some things I really like about it. Some minor features. Uh, mostly in the way that they've set some things up. One of the things that they that we want to talk about real quick, if if my product person will hand me uh, out of the case over there. And also, an interest that we did the uh, kind of a unscientific test of the noise levels of the people have complained about the little Mavic Black Air case inside there, and I didn't see a lot of difference Black between case. the two. So, right. And that is basically, there's a sunshade that goes on the controller. Oh, yeah. But out of the box, Good there's a problem mention. with it. I've already done the modification, but out of the box, it has... Four-sided. Four-sided. And why and is that put, an issue? Well, let me put it on here. I've got the sunshade on it with the bottom taken off because it's a touch screen. Right. And so you're trying to reach in like this to do the touchscreen with the four sides. And this right. still offers just as much shading. So by taking this off, which is very easy to do, I keep it in case I ever want to resell it or yeah. for some reason it's an but issue. No. I like to keep things original in the boxes too. But this allows me to shade the device. I don't find that I've needed to use it yet. And we've been in fairly bright situations. But so far, so good. But at least I can reach in with my hand and use the touch screen. Otherwise, you're trying to reach in there around it. And again, that was one of my design flaws mm -hmm. that I didn't like. Yep. Also, this just uses two suction cups. Real easy, as you saw it, it tried to fall off. Yeah, you almost have to take your finger and lick each side and you know make sure it stays on you there. You want to put a little tape on there, a little, not, uh, well, yeah, the problem with tape, tape The problem with tape or... is that it's not going to be on the screen because it goes right on the screen on the sides, on yeah. the glass if there. If you use gaffer's tape, don't, so, you wouldn't want to use duct tape. No, but, but if you use gaffer's, tape. you'd have to wrap it all the way around yep. this way. And it's a minor design issue. Mm -hmm. But the screen has been bright enough and true enough as far as I'm concerned. I haven't had to use this should yet. should mention, too, that the newer models already come like that. They don't have the fourth uh, walls, so right. to speak. They've so. already gotten rid of it. So it is. Yeah. they've made some improvements. So that's why I still give it a four and a half. What would you give it, Jim, on the five, out of five stars? From what I've seen, yeah, four, four and a half. I'd give it right in there. So if you have comments, please leave them uh, below. And questions. And questions. Uh, anything that you, if you have anything about other drones, you know, please ask. Uh, if we don't know, we can probably find the people who can answer that for right. you. So, again, thanks for tuning in. And uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. More good stuff coming up soon.